I, I was fed this a lot. I'm sure you were too. This idea that um, the medieval ages mm -hmm. were the were bad and were bad until the Enlightenment. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure this has to do with politics in some way. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> is this is this narrative something that continues to be taught, and do you agree with it, and why not? <laughs> Well, yeah, I think it continues to be taught, although it's losing some uh, appeal, or at least it was losing appeal. Maybe it's back. I don't know. Um, it, the 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 post maybe I shouldn't even go down this road, but the postmoderns in the twentieth century um, w were more interested in attacking the Enlightenment than they were attacking the Middle Ages. And so we got, we, there was a little opening where the Middle Ages could kind of be redeemed a little bit mm. because the postmoderns hated the Enlightenment. Um, but that's over now. Now no one cares about anything. So, so <laughs> it, it, now we're back to hating everything. So, okay. um, but yes, that narrative is the norm, I think. It's what's in most of the textbooks. It's what, it's what kids learn. And it's um, wrong. <laughs> It's very wrong, um, and it's based on this idea. Well, I don't. I, I okay. I'm going to try to answer, Matt. I'm sorry. I'm stumbling all over the place. But the, the the one of the ways that you answer things is with ideas, like talking about the the history of ideas, and that can be misleading in thinking that the ideas are what cause everything. But that's not what I'm trying to argue. Okay. Yeah. But there are there are ideas that correspond to actions, and one of the ideas that we get in the modern period. Um, is the idea that human society history is in its nature chaotic and disordered? All right, so um, this actually this actually precedes uh, the Enlightenment, it precedes um, John Locke and Hobbes and these guys, and and really maybe maybe one way to see it, a foundational place would be even in Protestantism, where there's a sort of idea of total depravity. Um, that history is a, a realm of a satanic realm of 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 sin mm -hmm. and 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 so you have this idea that chaos and violence is what is the norm mm -hmm. and then order is imposed mm. so order comes in and is imposed on top of that um the the classic expression of that is Hobbes, Thomas Hobbes and, you know, the Leviathan, the, the famous account of the state of nature, you know, where he says life is, is nasty, short and brutish, brutish, short. Now I don't remember the quote, mm -hmm. but whatever. The point is that it's a war of all against all. And then what emerges from the war of all against all is the Leviathan or the, the, the corporate order, the corporate power that's so overwhelming that it awes and frightens all the individuals into compliance. And that's the emergence of society. Mm. Now, Hobbes is kind of a dark version. You have Locke that kind of tries to lighten that up <clears> with a few um, ideas about property and stuff that don't really hold a lot of water, but whatever. He tries to make it sound less dark. You have Rousseau, who's doing a similar sort of thing, only kind of inverted. You have all of these accounts have the political as being artificial, as being um, useful, as being a creation that human beings come up with in mm. order to solve this problem yeah. um, of violence and of, of, of conflict. So they all rely upon uh, a certain assumptions. They rely that, that anthropo anthropologically we're primarily individuals, self-interested individuals, that that's the, the, the base condition. So <clears throat> they can't account, well, one of the ways where this is obvious is they can't account for the existence of like families or children or anything like, I mean, their accounts, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to see just how kind of ridiculous John Locke's political theory is, all you have to do is go read what he says about family and children. I mean, it's just like, can what? you sum it up for us? Because <laughs> I haven't read it. Um, well, that the only reason why a man has a child is, is because he's worried about his old age and like the kid will yeah. take care of him. Yeah. And the only reason why a man and a woman get married and have children is so that they, so that they have, they can pass the estate on, which will then care for them. And then once the children are raised, then there's no reason for them to stay together. They so exactly split. what we were talking about earlier. It's less, not yeah. more. Yeah. Less, not and more. The right. less is complicated. Yeah, exactly. Um, Thomas Hobbes says that when a baby is born, the mother has a decision of whether to kill it or keep it. If she decides to keep it, then she's its master and it's, it's her slave. Mm. And that's the beginning of political society of the mm. master slave relationship. 
All right, these sorts of things. So it's like, wow, I've seen mothers and babies, and that doesn't seem to be what I see. <laughs> right? okay. It's not my experience. <laughs> <laughs> but they all, because children are, are the fundamental problem for that anthropology, right? Because children are completely dependent. Right. They're not independent. Um, the power differential is obvious, and there's no way that we can construe um, the, the love and, uh, that is demanded by the child from the parent as being something that's self-interested for the parent. I mean, it, it seems those are always a stretch to the point of being absurd. So that creates, so they always have to carve out like an exception for family. Family is like the weird private place where weird things happen. But when, as soon as you leave the house and get out in the world, now we can explain it all through contracts and negotiations. Interesting. You know, it's like, well, if I, if, if love is devotion is true in the family, why can't it be true with my neighbor? Why can't it be true to my friend? Why can't it be true with my business partner? Right? Yeah. Yeah. If it's real, then it's real. Yeah. But if you right? begin with the, if you begin with the assumption that your family <laughs> interactions and relationships are contracts. Yeah, exactly. Then there's nothing else to be had elsewhere. Exactly. Right. So I that's, think. so that's the, the, the point is that, that I was getting at is that that exactly is the, dis, the shift from the medieval to the modern. So the medieval assumption is that there's a primordial peace Aha. that man is in his nature at peace with each other in friendships and in familial relationships and that sin ah. is tears and and sin are wounds on that and sin is very real sin is profound right it's not like they're negating the existence of evil quite the contrary they talk about it continuously mm -hmm. but that evil is occurring on a, a substrate of peace right the peace hmm. in, so so um social peace is what is in the garden right and sin is what distorts and 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 wounds it and hurts it but human nature is in its essence peaceful and and loving towards each other right so we so, so that's the default in so fact. For the, <laughs> so for the christian we've been cast out of eden and for the atheist to use just that term we've never been in eden and we're seeking it like we're in that we're we're created yeah. outside we're in the chaos and we're seeking Eden. Is that the two? Um, like one starts with chaos and seeks to establish order. One believes that order was at the beginning of things, right. and sin brought about. Yeah, that's chaos? that's a way of of putting it. I think that the uh, uh, I mean, and that may be more true with like the socialist bent of as far as the recreation of some sort of Eden or the, okay. the finding of it. But that wouldn't. Be I think how the you, liberals yeah. are more happy with um, with just a sort of. Uh, muddled stasis middle middle ground where we're not killing each other but it's not paradise and we just I kind see. of produce new stuff and consume it so we're in chaos <laughs> so so you're saying that for the liberal we're in chaos and we just have to make the chaos as bearable as possible but we're not striving for eden is that what you mean well or that that eden is not something that happens um in in time so, so for Protestant, so the liberalism, the liberal bent, I think, is much more Protestant and, and, and develops out of Protestantism. Okay. Um, and so there's the idea that, that salvation is something that occurs in a totally different realm, right? That, that, okay. that somehow yeah. Um, heaven... It's, yeah, independent from my daily life. Yeah, like, independent from the world, from, from history, world, right? Yeah. Like history is occurring and then, and then <clears throat> the believer is sort of unilaterally plucked out of that into <laughs> right but 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 history itself isn't moving towards yeah okay. towards its own holiness hey thank you so much for watching before you go do us a favor leave a comment let us know what you thought of the video like and subscribe